Muy buenos días, amables amigos. Good morning, kind friends and brethren present, and all those who are in different nations, ministers, and congregations. May the blessings of Christ, the angel of the covenant, be upon all of you and also upon me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. For this occasion, we read in St. Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 36, where it tells us, And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, Thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. This historical case is none other than an angelic visitation from God to the Virgin Mary just like the angel Gabriel had made an angelic visitation to Zacharias the priest, giving him the good news that through his wife, Elizabeth, Zacharias the priest was going to have a son who was John the Baptist. Therefore, Zacharias received a visitation and then six months later the Virgin Mary received a visitation from the same angel Gabriel an angelic visitation in both cases, it was for the coming 
of a son. He said to Zacharias that he would have a son through his wife Elizabeth and that he should name him John who would come preparing the way of the Lord as the forerunner of the first coming of Christ. And he would come in the spirit and power of Elijah. And it was announced to Mary that the Holy Spirit would come upon her and overshadow her, and she would conceive and bring forth a son, a child, and he would be called Son of God, Son of the Highest, and that she should call his name Jesus. Sometimes, when we're going to have a child in the family, we say, Lord, give me the name for my son or my daughter. And notice, here God, through the angel Gabriel, gives Zacharias and Elizabeth the name for the son they're going to have, and also to the Virgin Mary for the child, the son who will be born through her. Two important names. Because the mission they would have would be very great. One, a forerunner preparing the way of the one who would come after him. John the Baptist prepared the way for one greater than him. That is why John would say, He that comes after me is greater than me. I baptize you with water and in water. But he who comes after me will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. A greater baptism. You may be seated if you're so kind. The angelic visitation to the human family. Since Israel is part of the human family and also from Adam and on, people are also members of the human family, and the believers in Christ are also members of the human family, like all other people. When God sends an angel, like the angel or Archangel Gabriel, or the angel or Archangel Michael, Therefore, it is an angelic visitation or visit to the human family. Let's remember the occasions when God appeared to Adam in whom was the seed for the reproduction of the human being starting from that time and on. That is why all human beings descend from Adam and Eve. And therefore, they are one family. They are one race. we find the occasions when God visited Adam. We also remember God's visit to Cain and Abel. Also God's visit to other people in the Bible like Enoch like Methuselah, like Noah, and also God's visitation to Abraham on different occasions. On one occasion, he appeared to him in the form of a man 
when he appeared to him as Melchizedek in chapter 14 and blessed Abraham and gave him bread and wine and blessed him. And also, when he appeared to him in chapter 18 and 19 of Genesis, he appeared in the form of a man together with the archangels Gabriel and Michael made flesh because God is the creator and he created himself a body for the archangel Gabriel a body for the archangel Michael and a body for himself And they appeared like two men, like three men of this earth visiting Abraham. And they ate a tender cough and also some tortillas or cakes baked on the hearth. They also drank milk and butter and so forth. And that was an angelic visitation to the human family, to the seed of Abraham represented in Abraham. And then they visited Lot there in Sodom where Lot was, let's say, the major of the city. When there is an angelic visitation, something great is about to happen and more so when the archangels Gabriel and Michael appear and God appears veiled in his heavenly body as the angel of the covenant or veiled in a body of human flesh. We find him appearing to Moses too. For God had said to Abraham in chapter 15 of Genesis that for 400 years his seed would be in bondage in a land that is not theirs, but after 400 years God would deliver them with a mighty hand and he would punish the nation that would have them oppressed in bondage meaning that in his visitation to Abraham, he is announcing a visitation that he will make to Abraham's seed in another land, which came to be Egypt. Also, the scripture says that when Elohim with his two archangels Gabriel and Michael in chapter 18, were eating with Abraham, and Elohim asks Abraham, Where is Sarah? After telling Abraham that he will give him a child through Sarah, who was barren and was 89 years old and Abraham was 99 years old. Something impossible, humanly speaking. But the question that God himself asks is, is anything impossible, hard? Is anything hard for God? And if not, then God fulfills what he promises in due time. Chapter 
chapter 18, verse 14 says, verse 13, And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah, and according to the time of life, Sarah shall have a son. And that angelic visitation, notice how God speaks the word of promise for the son that he had promised to Abraham. And now the time had come for it to be fulfilled the following year when Abraham would be a hundred years old and Sarah would be 90 years old. In other words, a year before, he tells him, next year, Sarah will have the son. In chapter 21, verse 1 and on of Genesis, it says, And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah, as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. Here we have a visitation to Sarah when the time came for her to become pregnant and have the son. For that to happen, she had to be rejuvenated after Abraham was given the promise that she would have a son from Abraham. We find that in the divine angelic visitation there are great promises for the believers in Christ. It comes as a blessing to the believers in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And this is under the Old Covenant. And under the New Covenant, these divine visitations are in the midst of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is under the New Covenant. It is the house of God, the people of God, of the New Covenant. And while the New Covenant is in the midst of the church, we find countless divine visitations as it was in the time of the patriarchs, of the judges, of the prophets. We find the case of Daniel on more than one occasion receiving the angelic visit of the archangel or angel Gabriel and also the visit of Michael, the archangel, in chapter 12, and also in chapter 10. 
where the Archangel Gabriel is told, the Angel Michael tells him, show him, make this man, Daniel, understand the vision. We find that those divine visitations have been mostly to God's prophets. God's messengers of different times. But some were also to some believers in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. In the New Testament and for the introduction of the New Testament, in the reading that we had, we saw the angelic visitation of the Archangel Gabriel to Zechariah as a priest, and six months later to the Virgin Mary, and nine months later to the shepherds there in Bethlehem of Judea when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in a manger where he was placed. And we find that later, the believers in Christ, the apostles, and different messengers have been having a visitation of God at different times. We also find Israel having God's visitation according to St. Luke chapter 7 St. Luke chapter 7, verse 16. This was when he raised a young man who was being taken to be buried. Jesus Christ does arrive to the city of Nain when he arrived, he had compassion of the young man. She was a widow and only had one son. He touched a beer. They stopped. And he said to the child, to the young man, I say unto thee, arise. He says to the young man's mother, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still, and he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother, and Jesus gave him to his mother. And there came a fear and awe, and they glorified God, saying, that a great prophet is risen among us, and that God hath visited his people. Just like when God appears to Moses and tells him that he has come down because he heard the cry of his people, the groaning of his people, saying, 
I have come down to deliver them, and he sends Moses over there. And when Moses arrives in Egypt and meets the elders of Israel, God was visiting his people there. The angel of the covenant, the pillar of fire, crossed in his body of light the angel visiting his people veiled and revealed through Moses through a veil of flesh. When God sends a prophet, that is a visitation of God to his people. And therefore, an angelic visitation to the human family. We also find the believers in Christ on the day of Pentecost and even before that when Christ resurrected and they went to his tomb they saw two angels dressed in white and they gave them the news that Jesus Christ was not there in the sepulcher but that he had risen. An angelic visitation to the human family with good news for the human race. Then, on the day of Pentecost, the visitation of Christ and Holy Spirit, pouring out the Holy Spirit upon 120 believers who were gathered there. And then, he continued baptizing those who received him as Savior and were baptized in water in his name. God visiting his people, baptizing with the Holy Spirit in fire, as John the Baptist said, Behold, the one who comes after me, the one who is greater than me, the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit in fire. Then we find we find Philip being visited by the angel, speaking to him, receiving that visitation. Then we also find Peter on different occasions, like in prison, being visited by the angel of God who freed him from prison. He was also visited from another occasion when he was praying and he showed him a vision to go to the house of Cornelius, who was praying and to whom the angel had also appeared and told him to send for Peter that he would tell him what he had to do. We also find St. Paul being visited when he was on his way to Damascus to look for the believers in Christ and imprison them, take them to Jerusalem, Christ appears to him in that light brighter than the sun, that pillar of fire. He falls of his horse, and from the light he hears the words, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? It is hard for you to kick against the pricks. And Saul knew that this was the same light, the same pillar of fire that had appeared to Moses in the burning bush that was not consumed 
in Exodus chapter 3. And knowing that it was the God of Israel who was speaking to him, he asks him, Lord. In other words, it recognizes him as the Lord God Almighty, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in whom he believed. In whom he believed. But he asks him, why? He says, if I am persecuting these believers in Jesus, and now you're telling me that I'm persecuting him, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Lord, who are you? And from that pillar of fire, the Lord says to him, I am Jesus, whom you persecute. Because since Christ is in his church and in each of the believers, whoever does evil to one of these little ones is doing it to Christ. And whoever does good to one of these little ones is doing it to Christ. And that is around there in St. Matthew chapter 25 verses 31 to 46. Inasmuch as you have done it to one of these my little ones, or the least of these my brethren, you have done it to me. And the scripture also says that whoever receives one of these little ones is receiving the Lord. Therefore, it is important to know these things so that we so that we may be conscious that what is done for Christ is done through and with the believers in Christ in the mystical body of Christ. And he that receives a prophet receives a prophet's reward. And Christ says, He that receives whosoever I send receives me. St. John chapter 13 Verse 20 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that receiveth whosoever I send receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me, meaning the Father. And therefore, he is receiving what? An angelic visitation through Christ and Holy Spirit in a human being sent by Christ or a heavenly angel. For example, we have in Revelation chapter 22, verse 16, where it says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bride and morning star. That is an angelic visitation for the believers in Christ who form the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, just like for each stage of the church, Christ and Holy Spirit 
came manifested in the messenger relevant to each stage of the church. And therefore, that was a visitation of God, a divine visitation to carry out, to fulfill what he had promised for each stage of his church, to quicken that promised word, that divine promise to make it a reality. At the end time, we also had a divine visitation in the seventh messenger of the seventh age of the gentle church, Reverend William Branham, carrying out a work in favor of the human being, of the human family, in God's program for that time. And we have the promise that there will be another angelic visitation for the human family for which Reverend William Branham prepared the way as forerunner of the second coming of Christ. He prepared the way with everything that he preached from God. And the one who will come after him will be coming, as the Holy Spirit said, through Reverend William Branham. He cannot come any other way. He must come according to how the forerunner prepared the way for him. We also have the promise that there will be a full manifestation of God in the midst of his church, just as there were temporary manifestations in his church from stage to stage, from age to age, in which the Holy Spirit was manifested through a messenger and made a reality what was promised for each age. For our time, there will also be an angelic visitation and there will be a full manifestation of Christ in his church to crown the divine program and thus crown the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thus, to complete his work with a golden seal in a golden age, which pertains to our time. It will be the greatest angelic visitation that God has ever carried out in the midst of the human family because with that visitation he will give us the faith to be transformed and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. With that visitation he will reveal to us the mystery of the seventh seal, the mystery of the second coming of Christ, which is the greatest mystery in the Bible. To such an extent that Jesus said that no one, not even in heaven, knew when the day and hour would be. The day and hour of what? Of the second coming of Christ. That mystery is contained in the voice of Christ 
crying as when a lion roars and seven thunders uttering their voices. The thunders, which is the voice of Christ, will reveal at the last day the greatest mystery of the heavens and the earth. The second coming of Christ coming to his church at the last day in the angelic visitation to the human race for the restoration of the dead in Christ and the restoration of we who are alive. We also have the promise that there will be an angelic visitation in a great tank cathedral where the same angel of the covenant who delivered the Hebrew people who appeared to Moses and delivered them through the prophet Moses and led them through the wilderness and led their way by night as a pillar of fire, a pillar of light, and by day protected them from the sun as a cloud of shade over the people. That same angel of the covenant who delivered them and gave them the tables of the law on Mount Sinai to Moses for the people will be present in the fulfillment of the third pull in a great tank cathedral that there will be in the midst of Christianity, in the place that God has determined, has chosen before the foundation of the world. In that third pull, which the angel tells Reverend William Branham about the revelation of Christ through his spirit will be will be in full form and what we saw partially in Reverend William Branham he says will be in all its fullness Back then, it was partial and temporary. In the fulfillment of the vision of the Great Tank Cathedral, it will be in all its fullness. And that will be an angelic visitation from God for the blessing of all the believers in Christ who form the Church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ at the last day at this end time will be waiting for the greatest angelic visitation in the history of Christianity and in the history of the human race. Because in that visitation and with that visitation, there will be a resurrection of the dead in Christ into glorified bodies which are young and eternal, just like the glorified body of Jesus Christ, and a transformation for the believers who are alive, who form the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, let's be praying and also keep our eyes open, our spiritual eyes wide open, because these are the things that are promised for this end time. And is anything impossible for God? No, nothing. As he has promised, that is what he will do. We have seen what the angelic visitation to the human being at the last day will be like. As we have also seen 
the visitation of God to the human family at different times. We have seen how God has visited his people Israel just like he visited Abraham. He also visited Jacob and he visited different prophets, different believers. And the last wine is the best. Like the wine in the marriage of Cana. The last wine is the best because with that wine of revelation, he will give us the faith to be changed and raptured and taken with Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. What year will all of that happen? We don't know, but we do know one thing, that it is going to happen. Therefore, let's be prepared with our lives fixed before God and praying and waiting on what God has promised for this end time. And that will be the way that Jesus Christ will reveal himself to his church at the last day. We're already living at the last day, which is the seventh millennium from Adam to now. Just like Saturday is the last day of the week, and it is the seventh day of the week. The seventh millennium, which is the last day before God, because one day before the Lord is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Therefore, being conscious that we are living at the last day before God, the seventh millennium, from Adam to now, let's be aware of what are God's promises for the last day for this angelic visitation. Remember that Christ said in St. John chapter 6, verses 39 to 40, referring to all the believers in him, he says, and I will raise him up at the last day. In other words, he points to that last day before God, which is the seventh millennium from Adam to now. Just like the last days of which Joel says that God will pour out of his Holy Spirit upon all flesh, began in the days of Jesus Christ, Hebrews chapter 1 says that those days were already the last days. It says, God Chapter 1 of Hebrews. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. When does it say that he spoke by Jesus Christ, by the Son of God? It says, in these last days. In other words, in the days of Jesus Christ, the last days had already begun. That is, when Christ was seven to ten years old. The last days began. The three last days before God, which are the last three millennia. And from that point on, we have been living at the last days. But it is important to know in which of the last days Jesus lived. In the first of the last days, which was the fifth millennium from Adam to now. And then the church was also born in the last days because it's in the last days that God would pour out 
of his spirit upon all flesh, according to Joel chapter 2, and also the book of Acts chapter 2, verse 31 and on, and also chapter 2, verse 1 and on, where he poured out of his Holy Spirit upon those who were in the upper room on the day of Pentecost, and those were 120 believers in Christ who were waiting for the coming of the Holy Spirit. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds, who, being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. We have seen what the last days are. And we have seen the day in which we're living before God, which is the seventh millennium from Adam to now, which is the last day before God the last millennium before God. Now, we don't know in which year of the last millennium, of the seventh millennium, everything that is promised for our time will be fulfilled. But we do know one thing, that God will fulfill it. Every blessing promised for the last day for the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will be brought by him in his final manifestation in the angelic visitation to the human family. That is why the third pole will be for the world, for mankind, for the foolish virgins as well, and for the broad church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is represented in the wise virgins. That is what is promised. The Lord comes to the wise virgins. They come in with him to the marriage and then the door is shut and no one else can enter into the marriage anymore. That is in St. Matthew chapter 25 verse 1 to 13. That will be the angelic visitation of Christ to his church, of Christ the bridegroom to his bride, his virgin church. Therefore, I continue to wait for that angelic visitation to the human family. And who else? Each one of you as well. From that visitation and with that visitation, there will be the materialization of the promises of the coming of the Lord, of the resurrection of the dead in Christ, of the faith to be transformed and raptured, and therefore, the transformation of the believers in Christ who are alive at the last day and the rapture or catching away of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ 
to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. The angelic visitation to the human family. Let's be attentive because he is working He is working for the complete fulfillment of all those divine promises. Let's keep our eyes wide open with the light of the last day, which just as he shined back then in the east and said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The light of the first coming of Christ shined in the east in the land of Israel. The light of Christ the light which is Christ in his second coming will shine in and with his church at the last day. And therefore, in the West, which pertains to the continent of the Americas, which includes Latin America and the Caribbean, which was also in the northern part in the manifestation through Reverend William Branham, it will also shine for the Latin American and Caribbean people. As the lightning comes out of the east and shines where? In the west, in the continent of the Americas, the west of the planet Earth. So shall also the coming of whom does it say? Of the Son of Man be. Therefore, the coming or full manifestation of the Son of Man at the last day, his final manifestation, will be in the West. That is what the Jews will see, and they will say, this is the ones we're waiting for. And let's leave that there. And... I don't know if we will have to wait until the time comes for the opening of the seventh seal, which the seven thunders, the voice of Christ, will open to his church at this end time in the third pull to give us the faith to be changed and taken with to Christ to the marriage supper of the Lamb. It has been a great blessing and privilege for me to be with you on this occasion. We want to be prepared for the coming of the Lord, the resurrection of the dead in Christ, and our transformation. We want to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb soon. It is a promise from Christ for me and for whom else? For each one of you as well. May God bless you and keep you all.